God is good. Hallelujah. I want you to speak it out and say that I know my God is good and his mercies endures forever. You may be going through a hard time. You may be going through a challenging time. You may be going through the most successful, glorious time in your life. No matter how your personal situation or the situation around you look like, I want to challenge you to open yourself up and agree that God is good. Hallelujah. And his goodness and his mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Psalm 23 verse number 6. I pray and provoke this truth in its fullest manifestation in your life. That goodness and mercy follow you. Everywhere you are moving by grace, not by might, not by power, not by your own perfection, not by your ability, beyond your every every um, qualifications, the goodness and the mercies, the goodness and the loving kindness of God, the goodness and the favor of God follow you all the day days of your life not some days not sometimes every day all the days every day all the days of your life hallelujah i pray that you receive the manifestation of these blessings in your life amen we are looking at the miracles of jesus christ he did so many miracles in scriptures And we want to look at what can we observe from these miracles. And um, then we will pick some lessons from each of the miracles. So today we start with the first one from the book of Mark. Mark chapter number 11 from verse number 12 to 26. We read the miracle of Jesus Christ cursing the fig tree. Jesus Christ cursing the fig tree. And we want to read it and take some lessons from it. So I start from verse 12. On the following day, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing in a distance a fig tree in leaf. He went to see if he could find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. And he said to it, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. That is up to the verse number 14. I will jump and go and read from the verse number 26. As they passed, at verse number 20, sorry. As they passed by in the morning, they saw the fig tree withered away to its root. And Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. And Jesus answered them, Have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your Father also who is in heaven may forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father who is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Very interesting passage of Scripture. 
and I want to make some remarks about what we observe from this passage. Then we will continue with it tomorrow and pick some lessons from it. The, the first thing is we see that this is the only miracle of Jesus Christ where we will say that he destroyed something. Okay? He cursed the fig tree. And it, it may not look like the normal thing. That is why I'm emphasizing that this is, a, this is the one and the only miracle that Jesus did, which was not, uh, you will say, in a positive sense, positive for the tree. It was negative in that sense. It was a miracle of destruction. But you see, there is still lessons for us to pick from this miracle of a fig tree. If you read uh, a parable about a fig tree in Luke chapter number 13, Luke chapter number 13, verse 1 through to verse number 9, there is a parable about a fig tree. And Jesus used this parable of the fig tree to illustrate a man who planted a vineyard. And when he came to look for fruit on it, he found none. And he said to the worker that tended, for three years now, I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree. And each time I inspect it, I found none. Cut it down. Why should it continue to deplete the soil? But the worker answered him, Say, leave it alone this year too, until I dig around it and put fertilizer on it. Then if it bears fruit next year, very well. But if not, you can cut it down. You can cut it down. And this parable of the fig tree that we just read from Luke chapter number 13, it was also an illustration of the Lord extending grace to the fig tree. That after three years, he was ready to cut it down. But by the pleading of the worker, he extended grace to this fig tree that it should be allowed to survive another year. And after another year of being taken care of, if he comes again and it has no fruit, then it will be cut down. So in this situation that we read from Mark, we do not see this extension of grace to the fig tree. What we see is Jesus comes, looks, there is no fruit, he curses it, they leave, they are passing by the following day, and it was already dead. So let's talk about the fig tree. What things can we find in the Bible about fig tree? In Hosea chapter number 9, verse number 10, the Bible says, When I found Israel, it was like finding grapes in the wilderness. I viewed your ancestors like an early fig on a fig tree in its first season. So think about it. We have the early fig on a fig tree in its first season before the actual fig shows up. Take note of it. And God was comparing the fig tree to Israel. You see, then they came to Baal and they dedicated themselves to shame. They became as detestable as what they loved. So here we see the fig tree is being used as an image of Israel. Hallelujah. And scripture is talking about fruit in the first season. But these were not the normal fruit, but an early fruit. An early fruit. So, Second one, Nahum chapter number three, verse 12. All your fortifications will be like fig trees with first ripe fruit. If they are shaken, their figs will fall into the mouth of the eater. So once again, 
Israel is being symbolized here as a fig tree that needs to bear its fruit in season. And God is saying that when it is shaking, mm, it will be destroyed. Hallelujah. Think about it. The next one, Zechariah chapter number 3, verse number 10. In that day, says the Lord of heaven's army, everyone will invite his friend to fellowship under his vine and under his fig tree. So once again, the fig tree symbolizing the blessings of God manifesting among his people so that it become beneficial to others. So once again, the fig tree is being used to symbolize the Israelite. Hallelujah. So think of a fig tree in the pictures, in the picture of the Old Testament scriptures that we have read, representing Israel. Israel represents the covenanted people of God. And Israel represented the people that God Almighty have chosen for himself. Before we go to the story of the parable of the fig tree, let's have at the back of our mind this symbolism that we can just take with us. That fig tree could represent the, the covenanted children of God, an imagery of Israel, an imagery of the covenanted people of God. And yet, there is a deadline for fruitfulness. And God expects fruits in its season. He even expects the first or the early fruit to show up. Hallelujah. He has sent grace to us. But there is a deadline for grace. When people reject the grace of God today, when people do not receive the grace of God today, there is a deadline, just like the, the, the fig tree. The day Jesus showed up at the fig tree, we will talk about it, but just take this image with you. The day Jesus showed up at the fig tree, expecting fruit, when he found no fruit, there were no more. There was not another chance for that fig tree. There was not another season. If we compare to the Luke chapter 13, no, there was not another season. We will say it has run out of its chances. And that day, the words of judgment were spoken. I want you to think about this, how important it is that we begin to appreciate the grace that we have received in Jesus Christ. The grace that have given us another chance and yet another chance. That when we have failed many times in, in our relationship with him because of grace, he has already extended mm, the arm of mercy to us. Because of grace. Hallelujah. That we have not been cut off. Hallelujah. Why? Because once you come to me, you are engrafted into him. You are part of the family and God does not cut you off. God does not curse you. Hallelujah. God does not speak words of evil over you. If you have been receiving words of curses and evil over you in the name of Jesus, I want you to know that no tongue that rises against you in judgment shall prosper. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17. So begin to apply it. The Israelite in reality they had to take these imageries. When Jesus spoke they, they understood the imagery of what he was talking about and how it could apply to them. So today I'm just dealing with the imagery that a fig tree narration to an Israelite, to a Jew, could connect some dot for them that God was ministering and, and, and ministering through this miracle, a message that a Jew could understand to mean that the day of judgment has come, the season of grace, the season of his mercy. Oh, yes will come to an end. And when that day comes, hallelujah, when he opens his mouth, it is judgment. I pray that we will 
we will be moved by compassion towards the perishing that we begin to see the God of the fig tree extending grace like in, in the Luke chapter 13 parable extending grace, extending another year, extending another, another season for people to open up and receive this gift as long as the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is on earth we should not take it for granted let's preach about his grace Let's preach about the love of God, the goodness of God that draws men unto him. Romans 2 verse 6. Let's preach it. Let's teach it. Hallelujah. That they begin to know that when symbolically, mm, symbolically it comes to the fig tree, that we will know that there is a coming judgment. That we will know there is a, an end to all things. Someday, somehow. And as long as we still have life and the grace of God that brings salvation that has appeared to all men is still available. Let's encourage men to make their heart open and receive that grace. Today I just talk about the imagery of the fig tree. We will pick this parable and go a little bit detail and pick some lessons. Now let's pray. Father I am praying that by your grace, by your grace, we are not like the fig tree that is cursed, but we are like the fig tree that have received an extension of grace. Hallelujah. And for that reason, I pray that any curses that have been released and spoken against individuals or families or group of people by whatever sources, we condemn those judgments because curse is the one who hanged on the tree. You took all the curses of the law upon yourself so that we will not be cursed. Thank you, Jesus, for doing that on our behalf. Galatians 3, verse 11 and verse 13. We are grateful and we are thankful that we are redeemed from the power of every curse. Hallelujah. That we do not have to wither, but we have to be fruitful. We might have been unfruitful, Lord. Lord, until this time and until this season in our life. But we come to you, Lord Jesus, learning from the story of the Israelites that you expect fruit. And I pray that we are fruitful, fruitful as your children, fruitful in living for Christ, fruitful in being exemplary in this last days, fruitful in shining in darkness, fruitful in sharing the gospel of your grace and salvation. Hallelujah unto all men. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that we are blessed. And thank you that you stay in us. The fire to see men like fig trees that my Lord need to receive the extension of grace so that they will not be cut off. I thank you and I bless you that open my eyes, pour your love in our heart that we can see people and not wait for them to wither for them to wither, for them to wither because of unfruitfulness. Help us, Lord, that as your children, your children that are being unfruitful, we will awaken from our sleep, our slumber and begin to bear fruit to your glory. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.